My name is Miles Allen and I'm the climate scientist who was on the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that was responsible for assessing how close we are to 1.5 degrees last year and I know that many of the school strikers have taken up this and are very worried that we are only 12 years or now 11 years away from reaching that threshold. So when I come down to talk to Fridays for the Future strikers First of all, I'm very impressed by what you're doing. First, congratulations, and uh, you've certainly done more to raise this issue for many people around the world than I've managed in the past 30 years. But this idea of a climate emergency, of the fact that we've got only a decade or so to address this problem, it, it helps in the sense of making people wake up that they have to do something, but we also have to realize it's quite dangerous. The, the rhetoric itself is dangerous because you have to realize that if we don't get emissions down by 50% by 2030, it won't be then too late to do anything about it. That's the danger with saying we have to do something by this date because then if we don't, people will ask, well, hmm, in that case, are we just doomed and we may as well just hunker down and try and survive? So. One of the analogies I've used a lot talking to uh, the school strikers, to, to you all out on the streets, um, is it's a little bit like smoking. Um, if, you're, if you're a smoker, it's a really good idea to stop. It's really helpful to set yourself a deadline to stop because humans react well to deadlines. So to decide, I'm going to stop smoking tomorrow, that's a really good idea. But if you don't stop smoking tomorrow, that doesn't mean it's then pointless stopping smoking. And it's, a, it's the same way with climate change. We've got to set ourselves deadlines because we've got to get on with this. We can't just carry on saying, oh, well, you know, another year won't make any difference. Every year makes a difference. Every year makes the problem worse. We have to start addressing it. But that doesn't mean that if we don't start addressing it now, there won't be any point in addressing it in 10 years' time. So I don't want to take away from your message at all, but I do want you to understand this because I know that a lot of you are really worried about what we can do about climate change. So this leads me to the point I'd really want to finish up with. A lot of your demands as school strikers are to grown-ups and the government to do something about this problem. There's one institution that you're not talking about, and I think you need to talk about it more. Many of you ask me, what can we do about this problem? And yes, all of us can individually make a bit of a difference. But suppose you were to discover that there were microbeads in your toothpaste. And we all know that microbeads get into the ocean, they do a lot of environmental damage. What could you do about it? Well, you could use a little bit less toothpaste. That's not really a solution to the problem. Better still, you could switch to a brand of toothpaste that doesn't contain microbeads. Better still, you could actually get on social media and tell people what you're doing and start campaigning to the company that's selling you the toothpaste that contains microbeads to have them stop doing it. So that's the missing piece in your ask at the moment. There's one institution in the world that has the resources, the access to capital, the engineering capability to solve the climate change problem. And that's the global energy industry that's selling the product that's causing it in the first place. And that's why I'd like you to start calling for the energy industry to take ownership of its product. We cannot continue using a product where the only way we dispose of the main waste from using fossil fuels is to dump carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. We need to stop dumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and the only way we're going to be able to do that is for the industry that's selling the product that's causing carbon dioxide to be dumped into the atmosphere to work out how to get rid of carbon dioxide, to dispose of it in safe ways that don't involve changing the climate for you and for your children. The industry can do it. They've got the money to do it. This is, this is the largest industry in the world. The profits they make every year are more than enough to solve the climate problem. But nobody's even asking them to try. Instead, you're asking the government to do something, and the government is saying, well, this is going to be a lot of money, and maybe we should spend the money on hospitals or something instead. And then you start getting stuck in arguments over money. Instead, we need to focus attention onto what the industry is doing and what the industry is not doing to make progress on the climate issue. So that's what I hope you'll add to your 
list of asks as the school kids of the future, don't let the industry carry on getting away with just selling a product where the only way of disposing of its main waste is to dump it in the atmosphere. Stop dumping CO2. That's my main message. So another thing we're doing here in Oxford is gathering academics, uh, industry people, NGOs, and even thinkers about the ethics of climate change to consider how we're actually going to reach net zero. So we've got an international conference on achieving net zero, which uh, is uh, taking place here in Oxford on the 9th to the 11th of September. Uh, because although lots of governments around the world have started saying, lots of companies have started saying, lots of cities have started saying, we're going to go for net zero, not so many people have worked out how. And it's really important for the academic community to step up now and work out how we're going to do this. To make sure that we achieve it in a way that's both just for people involved, fair and above all transparent, so everybody knows what's going on. As part of this international conference on achieving net zero, we're inviting the public to join us for an event on the evening of September the 10th. That'll be at the Oxford Town Hall. And we've got a fantastic lineup of speakers there from people coming in to the Achieving Net Zero conference uh, for, uh, for an opportunity for the public to engage. And we really hope many of the school strikers may come along to engage with some of the, some of the leading thinkers in this area uh, to, to on, on how we're actually going to manage to reach this ambitious climate goal.